So first question is depreciation that results from physical deterioration or functional obsolescence that can be repaired or replaced at a cost that is less than or equal to the value added to the property. Is this equity? Is this functional depreciation? Is this incurable depreciation or curable depreciation? Remember that it can re be repaired or replaced at a cost that is less than or equal to the value added. What are you guys saying? Oh, you guys knew this one right away, right? So this is the curable depreciation because the cost to repair it is less than the return I'm going to get for doing it. Now, if it was the opposite, if it was more than the return I would get on my investment to do it, then of course that would be incurable depreciation. Because remember, you can cure any problem with enough money, you almost any problem with enough money, right? But is it worth it? Will I get my money back? And that's the big question here. This is something the appraiser has to consider when he's looking into things. Which of these would an appraiser likely use to estimate the value of a single family detached home? Is it a CMA? Is it the cost approach? Is it the income approach? Or is it the market data approach? What do you guys think? He's going, the appraiser would use this to estimate the value of a single family detached home. Which one would the appraiser use? CMA, cost approach, income approach, or market data approach? Yeah, the market data approach. Now, the agent might use the CMA to show his client what the value is of the single family detached home, but the appraiser would use the market data approach. Remember, what is another word for market data approach? You guys remember what's another word for market data approach? And that, hey, Annabelle, and that's the sales comparison approach, right? The sales comparison approach, market data approach are the same thing. A building has a chronological age of 50 years. However, the building has been carefully updated and maintained by its proud owners and therefore has a blank of 30 years. Is it estimated age, economic life, estimated lifespan, or effective age? What do you guys think on this one? <laughs> yes, this is the effective age. It's like how old the building feels, right? What it appears to be the age of it. So it's been really, really well maintained. It looks newer than it actually is. So the effective age doesn't have to be the true age. It could be newer than it actually is. Jane owns a property that has been vacant for many years. The roof has been leaking and it's now starting to cave in. The property has extensive termite damage, all kinds of stuff that's going wrong here. It is likely suffering from, is it curable functional obsolescence, curable economic depreciation, economic obsolescence, or incurable physical deterioration? Yeah, <laughs> It's beyond repair. It's incurable physical deterioration, for sure, for sure. Market value is what? Is it determined by adding the cost of any improvement done to the property to the original sales price? Is it a price a property actually sold for? Is it determined by adding the index rate to the margin? Or is it the theoretical price that real estate is most likely to bring in a typical transaction? What do you guys think? Everybody's kind of mixed bag on this one. Which one is market value? Market value. And it is, oh, I stumped some people on this one. This is the theoretical price that the real estate is most likely to bring in a typical transaction. That's the market value, right? The market price is what it actually sold for. So if I say the market price, Say I say Ryan paid $400,000 for the house. That's the market price. The market value is whatever the appraiser had estimated it would go for. Blank is the reduction of an object's usefulness or desirability because of an outdated design feature. Is that brownfield designation? Is that interpleader? Is that economic obsolescence or functional obsolescence? What do you guys think? Yeah, this is functional obsolescence. It's the design is weird. It's in within the boundaries of my property that I'm having this problem and I could fix it if I wanted to. It's not something that I can't live with. It's just something that today's buyer probably would not want. Now, what would happen if it was obsolescence that was happening outside of my boundaries? Outside of my boundaries, what would happen? Or if it, it was obsolescence outside of the boundaries of my property? What would we call that economic obsolescence? So what's an example of economic obsolescence? I can think of like right now, 
a railroad track being near me. I hear it. I don't really hear it because I'm used to it, but it's near my house. An airport. Very good. An airport. A graveyard. Serithia. You know what? I never thought about that, but some people might see that as a negative, right? I don't know. I never thought about that. That's a good one. I've never thought about that one before. So an appraisal is determined using an algorithm, an opinion of value, a legal description, or the market price. What is an appraisal? <laughs> Which one is that? Yeah, it's just this opinion. It's not just an opinion. It's an educated opinion, right? It's, it's a justified opinion. It's not just out of the air. But an appraisal is someone's opinion, right? And it's a person's opinion who has a lot of experience and is, has a lot of training, but it's still just an opinion. The, the appraiser does not determine the value of the house. What determines the value of the house? What somebody's willing to pay for it, right? A subject property has three bedrooms and two baths. An appraiser uses a comparable that was recently sold in the area. And it has four bedrooms and two baths. Would the appraiser make a positive or a negative adjustment to the comparable party with the superior bedroom count? What would they do? Would they make a positive or a negative adjustment to that comp? I'll give you guys a second to think about this one. I, that was a lot of reading. So the subject has three bedrooms, two baths. The comps has four bedrooms, two baths. Yeah, they would make a negative adjustment, right? Remember Robin Hood? I rob from the rich and I give to the poor. So this comparable is rich compared to my subject. I'm going to rob from it. I'm going to make a negative adjustment. Yeah. Pam was an appraiser and he's tasked with valuing a single family residential lot. So vacant land and a popular subdivision area. What appraisal approach would she most likely use? Which one would she use for that vacant land? Is it the cost approach? Is it disintermediation? Is it the income approach? Or is it the market data approach? What do you guys think for the vacant lot? Ooh, I'm getting mixed answers tonight. Good. Glad we did this set of questions because some people are missing them. Not that I'm glad people are missing them, but it's good because it tells me that these are not ones that you just knew right away and you're learning something. So that's great. So yes, the market data approach would be used for both vacant land and usually residential properties, right? Single family residential or duplexes, three families, four families. We usually use that market data or sales comparison approach. So some people pick the cost approach. What would we use the cost approach for? Not for vacant land. But remember, what kind of properties do we use the cost approach for? Anybody remember? Yes, commercial like special use properties, a post office, a school, a fire station. I'm trying to think what else. A church, a museum, something that's very specialized that we can't easily compare to other things, right? Yeah, a church is a prime example. Also, sometimes we use the cost approach when we're valuing brand new properties where the neighborhood is so new that they haven't constructed any, or they've constructed all these new properties, but it's so new that no one has resold their property and moved out. So we don't have any recent sales other than brand new properties. We sometimes use cost approach on a brand new construction area. According to the principle of conformity, a residential property maintains a higher value when it is across the street from a shopping mall, it is next to a school, it is over improved for the area, or is it in the middle of a neighborhood surrounded by similar properties? Which one would be matching up to the principle of conformity here? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Yes, it's in the middle of a neighborhood with similar properties. A property has had a reduction in value due to a leaking roof and termite damage. An appraiser notes this in his report as economic obsolescence regression, physical deterioration, or functional obsolescence. What would the appraiser call this? What would he call this leaking roof and termite damage? Yes, this is physical deterioration. Exactly. It's just a property is falling apart in a way, right? It's deteriorating physically. What about regression? Does anybody remember what regression means? I'm sure we'll see this, question, this in another question. But when I have a property that is suffering from regression. I always think of regret, right? If I have a really fancy overdone property, yes, I'm gonna write the value goes down. I've got this over the top property surrounded by average properties. And so it's pulling the value of my property down. I'm regretting it. Regression, the property value is going down because I have an overdone property and it doesn't conform to the area. So it can't hold its value as well. 
as if it was another fabulous home neighborhood, right? So Sam is an appraiser who has decided to use the reproduction cost in his report. For which property would he most likely include this cost? Remember, this is a way we can do cost approach. We can use replacement cost or we can use reproduction cost. So let's think about it. When would we want to reproduce? We would know, want to know what's the cost to reproduce something. Is it a Target store in the suburbs? Is it a historic home where Abe Lincoln once lived? Is it a 1980s tract home in a subdivision? Or is it an old home in need of repairs? When would we use this reproduction? And yes, it's when it's usually when it's something historically significant, something that's very important that we would feel sad if we lost, society lost it, right? So we would use the reproduction cost because in order to make something very special like that again, that's how we would determine. Now, my house is a 1970s tri-level. If they were doing the cost approach on my house, do they need to make a replica 1970s tri-level? No, no one's going to miss one more 1970s tri-level, give or take, right? So we would use replacement cost for a house like mine. It's nothing historical, nothing significant, just the normal house. But something historical or very significant, we might. Adam completes his appraisal on a subject property by capitalizing the estimated future income of the property. What approach did Adam use? He's using the capitalizing the estimated future income of the property. Is it the market data approach? Is it the income approach? Is the reproduction cost approach or the replacement cost approach? What do you guys think? Okay, the income approach, right? Remember what cap rate is? Cap rate is my return on my investment and how much money I want to make on my investment. If I tell you that I want to make a 5% cap rate if I buy this apartment building, what am I telling you there? What I'm telling you is I want a 5% return on my investment annually. That's my cap rate or my capitalization rate. And we use the cap rate as part of our income approach formula. When preparing a CMA, a real estate broker would be interested in what the property they are evaluating might sell for in the future. An appraiser instead must determine the market value of a home by looking to the what. So remember, if a real estate broker is doing a CMA, he's looking to the future. What would this property likely sell for in the future? But what is the appraiser concerned with? The present, the cost of labor, the past, or rental averages? What's he looking for here? He is looking for the past. What happened in the past? He looks to what already sold. He looks to what already happened. And I stumped a lot of people here. So let's stop and think about it because I see why you picked it. I see why you picked it because he, it, he might be a little bit concerned about present, but what's happening right now presently isn't the main thing. He's using what's happened in the recent past to come up with his number, isn't he? And that's the important part. Now on a CMA, we don't just look to the past with recent sales. What else do we put in a CMA? I put in my CMAs, I put active listings because I want to show that person what the competing properties are going for or listed for, I should say. So if there's a bunch of houses listed in the neighborhood that are just like my house and they're all listed for 300000 probably not going to be able to list mine for three fifty, right? Because that's the competition. Another thing that I include in CMAs, which don't get included in appraisals, are expired listings to kind of show, because a lot of times when you use the expired listings, you're going to try to show like what was overpriced and show how it is. Use the expired tells a lot. It says, hey, if we place it here, Jennifer, good point. If we place it here, then it's probably not going to sell because this one didn't, right? That's an expired are good examples of that. So Charles owns a very unique building with a very odd design. He would like to know the value of the property and has asked his appraiser friend to determine a market value for it. What approach will the appraiser most likely use? Is it a gross income multiplier approach? Is it the market data approach? Is it the cost approach or is it the sales comparison approach? He's got a unique building with an odd design. What do you guys say? Yeah, probably the cost approach. If it's a very unique building, there's nothing to compare it to. It's a special use property. Sometimes all we're left with is that cost approach. And do you guys remember the formula for this? So remember, it's replacement cost or reproduction cost minus depreciation plus land value equals value, right? There you go. 
How long is the value an appraiser arrives at effective for? Oh, I might stump some people here. How long is the value an appraiser arrives at effective for? Is it one week, two weeks, one month, or the day it was completed? What do you guys think? How long is the value an appraiser arrives at effective for? One week, two weeks, one month, or the day it was completed? Yeah. Ooh, everybody kind of knew that one. Most people knew that one. So good. It's the day it was completed because the principle of change says that tomorrow the world could turn upside down, right? Tomorrow my house could be blown away by uh, a tornado or a hurricane. So we can have some kind of act of God that just takes this thing out, right? If it's valued at $300,000 as it sits today, if a storm comes along and blows it away, it's not worth as much, right? The value could change. So even though the bank that's ordered the appraisal might, they might still honor it and for a three weeks or a month or six weeks or whatever as a good value. That's okay. But what the appraiser is going to put on his report is that it's for valid for the day that the report was presented. The value measured by the cost of building a property with current materials and labor refers to the property's arbitration value, assessed value, reproduction cost, or replacement cost. Current materials and labor. We're talking about current. We're talking about replacement cost, right? That's the replacement cost. Today's prices. If I was trying to replace it with something historic and old and original, then that would be the reproduction cost. When do we see the assessed value come into play? What are we talking about when we're talking about assessed value usually? What do you guys think? Assessed value. Taxes. Very good. Yes, the taxes. Right. The assessed value would be based on taxes. So Sam is an appraiser and he has been hired to find the replacement cost of a property. Who likely hired Sam? Would it be an attorney trying to price a property for sale in a probate case? A homeowner wanting to know what list price he should put on a property he is preparing to sell. An investor looking to find an apartment building to add to his portfolio. Or an insurance company to see how much coverage they should offer the buyer. Who asked him for the replacement cost? More than likely. Yes, very good. The insurance company would be concerned with that because they need to know how much to insure the property for. A decrease in value brought about by the action of the elements, deterioration through ordinary wear and tear, or functional or economic obsolescence is called defeasance, depreciation, cost basis analysis, or disintermediation. What do you guys think? A decrease in value brought about by the action of the elements, deterioration, through ordinary wear and tear or functional op or economic obsolescence. Yeah, that's all things that cause depreciation. All of those things cause, cause depreciation. Dylan is an appraiser and he's seeking to find a market value of a home. Which of the following would Dylan never be concerned with while determining the market value of a subject property? Would it be the net operating income a property produces? The cost replace or reproduce a building? the current comps recently sold in the neighborhood, or the purchase price the owner paid 18 years earlier. Which one does Dylan just not give a hoot about? Yeah. How much the guy paid for it 18 years ago? Who cares, right? It's irrelevant now. I mean, it might be interesting to see for comparison how much it's gone up in value, but it's not going to affect his determination on the value. A property that has five bedrooms and only one bath would be suffering from physical deterioration, suffering from functional obsolescence, known as a manufactured home, or suffering from economic depreciation. Ooh, everybody kind of jumped on that one right away. Functional obsolescence. That's a prime example. I could live in a house with five bedrooms and one bath if I needed to. I grew up in a house with only one bathroom and I'm fine, <laughs> right? We didn't have five bedrooms, but we only had one bathroom and everybody survived. A lot of people that live in the city have that situation, right? And so we can live with it, but it's not what today's average buyer is looking for. Just like if most of the houses in the neighborhood had a two-car garage and yours had a one-car garage, we can live with a one-car garage, but it might be suffering from functional obsolescence because it's not what the buyers in that area expect to see. Appraiser Sandra has been asked to determine the highest and best use of a piece of property. What does this mean? Is it the tax depreciation that can be used on the property? The use that determines the highest gross income on the property? 
the use of the land that results in the highest net income attributable to the land, or she is being asked to determine the economic life. What do you guys think? Think about this. Think about gross versus net. That's important. Gross versus net. All right. So the use of the land that results in the highest net income attributed to the land. Because here's the thing. I could have really, really awesome gross income. But the problem with having really, really awesome gross income is I might also have a lot of expenditures out of that gross income, and I might not get to keep as much of it as I would like. So my net income is what I'm mostly concerned with. I want to know how much am I going to put in my pocket, right? And an appraiser would a lot of times talk about the highest and best use of a piece of property. Maybe I have a property that right now is just sitting there as a paid parking lot, and it's able to be used as a medical office building to be built there. And then they might say, well, hey, you know, if you did this, you would have a lot more income, and it might be something for the for the owner to consider. So the sales price is always, is it the market price, the market value, the appraised price, or the replacement cost? Careful here, guys. The sales price is always the what? The market price, the market value, the appraised price, or the replacement cost? What do you guys think? The sales price is the market price. Ooh, I tricked some people. I tricked a lot of people, I think. So the sales price is the market price. What's the market value? What we thought it was going to sell for, what we estimated it would sell for, what we put in our CMA it would sell for, what the appraiser guessed it might sell for, but what it actually sold for is the market price. Don't forget that one. 